Welcome to North Broad Street in Philly with former Princeton standout Noah Savage. I'm Dave Leno. Both schools are looking to string their third consecutive win and a big test for both with conference play approaching. Right, if conference play is your final, this is a great midterm. I mean, both of these teams could be among the top four teams in each other's leagues. So it's just going to be a great college basketball game. And VCU has their go-to scorer back in the lineup in Ace Baldwin, coming off a career high, 28 points on Wednesday against Vanderbilt. He's just a tough, hyper-competitive kid. He got injured. He hurt his wrist. He should have been out for weeks and weeks. What do you do? Came back early and dropped 28 on Vanderbilt. As for Temple, Caleb Battle has been very consistent shooting over his three starts and was key to the second half surge over LaSalle in that win on Wednesday. He's a big 6'5 guard. He gets up super high on his jump shot, and he's been on fire from downtown. He and Damian Dunn are a great one-two punch in the American. They're both 6'5 strong, and they complement each other well. Got VCU entering play today at 5-2, pitted up against Temple at 4-4. Four four. Temple now, of course, in the American, but was a longtime member of the A-10. Chuck Jones to throw it up. Temple controls in the home Sherry uniforms. And we're underway from Philly. Jones joined by Anthony Jordan and Mark Shore, the other officials. Yeah, VCU plays pressure, run and jump, a lot of trapping. They're trying to force the Temple and force turnovers. Hicks was driving baseline out to battle who scores right off the jump. Come on, they got to watch our open, Dave. You can't leave number zero. You can't leave him open. Baldwin is joined, Noah, by Jaden Nunn looking for a bounce back game. He did not score against Vanderbilt in that win, but did have a career high 24. There's none right on cue. There you go. He needs to be more aggressive, and he's a great shooter. So as soon as you see that first one go in, you got to have a short memory if you're a gunslinger from deep. And on the other end for Temple, Sir Miller, the Newman Goretti product, runs the point. That's been huge for Temple over the last decade plus, and really going back since the Aaron McKee era with their guard play. Yeah, they got a lot of big interchangeable parts who can complement each other well. And the other thing is they're still relatively young. They, they brought in some transfers to fill out the front line, but there's a lot of guys on this on this lineup that, that can come back for years and years for Temple. Here's Baldwin averaging over 17 points per game. He got two screws into his non-shooting wrist. They look down low for Johns and Hicks swipes it away. Yeah, Johns a very experienced player. Brandon Johns Jr. came over from Michigan. He's played in a lot of huge games in his career. Dunn gives it up again to Hicks from the quarter. It's a stellar three-point shooting team in Temple at 35.8%. It's the fifth scoring team amongst all American Conference scores. Here's Watkins, and it's a little bit of a hometown feel for him from nearby Trenton, New Jersey, playing here in Philly. Yeah, and there's a lot of that uh, connection here in the Philly, Jersey area between these two teams. Dunn, twisting and turning ahead of Watkins. Look down low to Reynolds. Yeah, and that, that was a little bit of an overpass inside by Damian Dunn. And that should have been an and one inside for Jamil Reynolds, who so, is a classic big guy. He's one of those throwbacks. Give it to him on the block. He's 6'11", 280. He's a lot of dude down there for, for the Temple Owls. Yeah, and to your point, didn't play too much with UCF, a transfer from that program under Johnny Dawkins. A good start for him in the American. Unfinished business there for Deloach. And it's a, a Temple team that top filling over Rutgers, Drexel, and LaSalle. They lost two overtime games to Wagner in the opener and also against Vanderbilt, both at home. Battle draws the contact there. So Aaron McKee is coming off his first winning season as a head coach for the Owls. Last year they were at 17 and 12. He's liked the way his team was done on the offensive end. He said the numbers know a need to improve on the defensive side moving forward. Yeah, and, and last year he had a lot of inexperienced players. We see some chippiness early here. We'll get back to that, but pushing and shoving underneath. And the foul was called on Watkins a, a moment ago. Just some talking, making some uh, dinner plans for later, maybe. Pats, Geno's. Where do you want to meet, Dave? Go ahead. Here, here's what I was going to say. I was going to give you some better cheese stick <laughs> options than this, although no disrespect to them. Yep, so Dunn saying hello. Uh, where are we going for lunch? Yeah, and I actually yeah. like this. If, if, if you're going to put your hands on me, and I'm an offensive player, like get him off. You can't let you can't let a guy hold you early and you see the foul called. Damian Dunn is one of the best players 
in the country in getting to the free throw line. He had 18 for 18 for the free throw line earlier this season. And it's because of how he plays physically on that end. And Watkins, that's his second very early, just two minutes and 30 seconds into the game. So keep an eye on that. And Trenton Catholic High School, third on this VCU team in scoring, looking for their sixth win. They're trying to go to their third NCAA tournament later on under coach Mike Rhodes. And speaking of Coach Rhodes, who's done a great job with this VCU team, always keeping this VCU program at the tops of the A-10. He was under the shock of smart staff as an assistant associate head coach. Did so good, Noah and Rice, and now spearheading VCU as their head coach. Yeah, and he's taken a lot from various coaching trees that he's been under, and they're back to that helter-skelter. They play, they play super physical on the defensive end, and they're, they're one of the most unique teams. Oh, look out. One of the most unique teams to play against in the country. A wild coming in just a moment ago and scoring right off the jump. Actually coming off a career high, just four points. Stolen away quickly from Baldwin. And it's Ooh. an offensive foul. Now, now you're seeing what VCU does. It takes you out of their rhythm. But right there, great pick and roll. Up top, throw it down. Toby Lawal. And then a great on-ball steal by Ace Baldwin. It's a VCU team, and you see the pressure right off the jump from him. That's the havoc under Rhodes and his pressing principles here. They'll trap and go into a little bit of a shell defense, but it's a team that's, that's causing almost 19 turnovers a game. If you look at adjusted efficiency across college basketball, you always mention VCU. Jaleel White also came in. They look for battle yet again. Done for the miss. It's going to go the opposite way to VCU. Better positioning that time for Nick Kern. Yeah, and you see how hard it is to guard Caleb Battle. The first three that he got, he's wide open in the corner. That three, he wasn't open at all. He just jumped over his defender and he still got a look at it. But if you're gonna play against VCU, they're gonna hand check you, hold you, bump you as much as they can get away with. So you've gotta be strong and decisive with the ball. I mentioned VCU coming in at five and two, three wins by five points or less. Call coming up here against Miller. Again, Hicks also has two fouls, just something to keep in mind moving forward. They actually were in the Arizona State game winning that, but that got away a little bit. The big storyline, though, for VCU is obviously with Baldwin missing time after the Morgan State game and getting him back. Johns and Jackson coming from Michigan and Jawan Howard's team have been great additions for the Rams. Yeah, and remember, they lost Vince Williams to the NBA, That's right? as well as Keyshawn Curry, who is an excellent player, is playing over in Europe. But it's, it's, that's what a program is, that you lose great guys. Two years in a row, they had a player drafted to the NBA, and they still maintain their level of excellence. Yeah, the other bones, Highland as well. 26 overall to the Nuggets. It's a great culture. In fact, they've won 10 straight home games at the Siegel Center in Richmond. The VCU fans very proud of, of what their program has done in a formidable force in the A-10. Down low, good move for Reynolds. That time over Lawal. The putback was missed by White. 20 to shoot here for Battle. A kick out here for Dunn. Now Reynolds really dominating though in that interior again. See if White can kick out nicely. Dunn inside loss, and that was better play by Jaden Nunn on the defensive end. Yeah, and I think Jamil Reynolds is going to have an advantage down low all night. He kind of relishes being that big body, having people bounce off him. So he's just got to live down there on the offensive end for Temple. Baldwin, a good look for Ooh. Johns, rejected by Reynolds. Oh. Dunn got that off of nine. We'll stay on this end for Temple. The Temple after this timeout, but this Temple defense has been stout. Yeah, you think you got a layup? Erased inside by Jameel Reynolds, the big fella, playing great for the Owls. From the V-Week on ESPN, from the Leah Corps Center, Dave Leno, Noah Savage, our entire crew, VCU going up against Temple, the third time in this series history. And speaking with both Mike Rhodes and Aaron McKee, there's been scheduling problems because how good these teams are, really, not a lot of programs around the country want to play these two schools. Yeah, if you're a, a Power 5 school, you're getting 20 conference games, which are, which are quality games. And it's really hard to win in the Leah Chorus Center against Temple. It's really hard to go down and play VCU. So I love that these two programs challenge themselves with this game. And, and it's, it's analogous to their league. It really is. Memphis, Cincinnati, Tulane. I mean, that, that could be 
the same as a Temple or the same as a VCU. And I think it's a great test for them at this point of the season. It's a game that makes a lot of sense. And, and it's kind of a unique game in today's college basketball line, uh, landscape. Oh, I love it. And you, you have a team that's one of the top uh, defenses, not just in the A-10, but across the country against one of the stellar shooting teams in VCU and Temple, respectively. Five minutes in, it's been back and forth, a frantic pace if you're just joining us. Temple holding a one-point edge. Here's Dunn with the pull-up. Yeah, as soon as he got to that right hand for 15, you could count it. He, he's so good kind of in those straight line drives and then can pull up quick and elevate. So Dunn is seventh in the American at scoring. How have you evaluated him, especially when battle was out and Jaleel White was starting at the first part of the season? Yeah, well, he's really, last year he took a huge step up, obviously, not only with his scoring, but his, his clutch play. He had several game winners. And now I just think he's letting Caleb battle into the game a little bit. So it's not that he's playing worse than last year, even if the scoring's down a little bit. He's just being unselfish. And, and, and that's going to be the storyline all year long is that is it Caleb Battle's game? Is it Damian Dunn's game for Temple? And his ability to move off the ball to score. You can see vertically how high he gets on his jump shot. I know Noah and I have been commenting about that in the pregame. A good move down low to Jaleel White with a baseline drop. And a great pass by Caleb Battle, keeping his head up on the delivery. White started the first five games, including the St. John's game, then was banged up a little bit with a knee injury, so they're looking to get him back more healthy and obviously getting quality time from the jump. And here's Baldwin. None. Shriver, he's an active three-point shooter and a transfer from Hartford, also a D2 school as well. They were looking down low for Deloach. But Temple so far offensively, they've done a great job against this VCU defense. Overcommit by Shriver, dish it down, and score for Jaleel White along the baseline. Good job not to charge on that play as well. But you've seen on Reynolds, by the way. You've seen already for VCU, even though they haven't done a great job on the offensive end, what makes them so tough? They play about 12 guys. So you got to just prep, prep, prep on the defensive end to know everybody's scouting report because it's not like they only go seven deep. And any given night, it could be one of those guys. Ace Baldwin drives the car, but it could be anybody who could be the leading scorer for BCU. Yeah, you got schools like uh, St. Louis, the Travis Ford is doing a remarkable job. We were commenting at Davidson. Uh, Duquesne's actually having a strong start to the year. You have, you have coaches in the 810 and Archie Miller now at Rhode Island and Frank Martin at UMass. Mike Rhodes also mentioned playing at a place like Fordham is a tough spot to play in. So regardless yep. of where the teams have stacked the start to this year, it's going to be some tough play in the A-10 for VCU. Yeah, I mean, St. Bonnie's just beat Notre Dame. They were picked to finish 10th. You know, G GW coming on strong. Fran Dumphy, of course, uh, local Philly legend at LaSalle is going to get them going. But Dayton returned all five starters. I mean, they're going to be a team to beat in the A-10. A 9-1 run here for Temple, breaking that press right down the teeth of VCU and the turnover here. Here's Battle, matters into his own hands. And a timeout called by Mike Rhodes. Caleb Battle just continues his unbelievably hot play as of late, getting out of transition. Euro wide open, count it. Back in Philly, Battle has 10 of Temple's 16. And speaking of Temple and the American Conference, how about Houston, number one in the country for the first time in 40 years? Where do you feel like, Noah, Temple stacks with Memphis, Cincinnati, and Tulane? All what I would surmise is battling for that two spot behind Houston. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of talent in this league. Uh, Penny Hardaway, we know what he has, and he got Kendrick Davis to transfer over from SMU, who's probably the number two player in the, in the conference. In my opinion, Cincinnati got Landers Nolly from Memphis. So there's a lot of shuffling the deck within the conference. But for Aaron McKee, he, he looks at his team like you're not young anymore. It's time to be good right now. Last year they were young. This year it's time to win. So Dane did well on Jackson that time. Schreiber's going to give it up. Five to shoot. Schreiber's got to recognize the shot clock here. The step back three. It's good defense that time by Damian Dunn. And Shriver is a great shooter, and he knew exactly where he was going with that ball. Dane tried to get the miss, going the opposite way here for Kern and company, and a block called against Azoni coming in for the first time, the transfer from Vanderbilt. 
Yeah, Nick Kern did a good job to just penetrate and be aggressive and get that call. But David Triver, who took that step back, he was a big-time shooter at Hartford. I mean, he can really fill it up. And he's, 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 he hasn't really shown his full game yet, I don't think, for VCU. It was a good stick back that time by DeLoad. Shriver, by the way, now have to count the one attempt from three. 46 attempts from the field, 40 of them from three. But a big guy that they needed, and they needed that area to improve. Three-point shooting for VCU, according to Mike Rhodes. Here's White on the aforementioned Shriver. Better positioning down low. Hey, just weight room, right? Jaleel White went right through David Shriver down low. Temple started the game two of seven since six of seven years. Baldwin with the pull up, and they desperately needed that. They yeah, so crafty off pick and rolls. He saw the open space, got to the spot, and elevated. Watching the game on Wednesday against Vanderbilt, I think it was a shot to everybody that he actually played, started, and had that career high 28, getting those two screws in his wrist. Good board there for Jordan down low. And the call coming up here against VCU's Deloach will bring us to another timeout. It's a VCU team on the road, down by nine here in Philadelphia. Back in a moment. Yeah, and I think it's similar to the A-10 in that, well, you've got, you've got Houston, that's the best team in the country right now. But then the next four or five, Memphis, Cincinnati, Tulane, maybe Wichita State, UCF uh, as well. But with, with the transfers in college basketball, you still don't know because every team is new every year. It's it's very rare that you have a team where you get everybody back. Temple might be one of the most kind of everybody last year is back this year for the most part, other than they brought in the two bigs in the transfer portal. But it takes time to develop chemistry, and that's why I think you see a team like Wagner be able to, to, to beat a Temple. It's just it's not the same as it used to be. Battle was looking for a call there on Baldwin. Here's Kern going the distance to Deloach, and they're going to reset up top. And to your point, the coaches are having to re-recruit their kids during the year. Baldwin with the crossover. That was smooth. There he goes, starting to heat up a little bit. Remember, he, he injured that wrist, and he almost begged to be allowed to play. You know, like he... He said, all right, I'm out two weeks. Well, there's five days in a week. Let me come back in 10 days. And, and it's a risk that he injured in high school. He cut the cast off in high school to play in a playoff game. So he's just one of, one of the toughest kids you'll ever be around in Ace Baltimore. Returned to the starting lineup last game. And remember, he recovered from Achilles tendon surgery to start the final 24 games last year. He missed the first eight. They desperately missed him. Obviously, it was very early last year, but came back strong for the Rams. Here's Baldwin. A call here against Jordan. And Baldwin averaging nearly 18 points per game and so different for this VCU program with him and without him. They call upon him. I know none has done strong without him, but it's great to have Baldwin in for college basketball. Yeah, and, and just to add on to that story about the injury, he and his mom were in the training room saying, let him get back on the court. <laughs> Like, rub some dirt on it. I mean, it really just old-school toughness. Two screws went in the wrist. He's back on the floor. He drives their whole engine. He's, he's really the catalyst for them on offense and defense. 16 fouls on Temple for the VCU. Nice job there by Kern, getting some playing time off the jumps and coming off the bench in all the games, averaging about 11 points per game. See if VCU can pick Ooh. up here on the pressure and cause a turnover. But that stymied that time by Jordan. And a foul called yet again with Deloach in his way. And I'll tell you, Noah, I think this Temple team doing a nice job breaking that press that is showing. Yeah, and they're being aggressive. They, they've kind of decided if you're going to give us open shots early, we're going to take them. That's Temple's mentality. They're not looking to pull it out and run stuff once they break that press. So it's going to bring Jordan at the line. The Temple team shooting 78%. The inaugural Basketball Hall of Fame London showcases tomorrow from O2 Arena as Hunter Dickinson in Michigan take on Oscar Shebway and number 19 Kentucky. Coverage begins at 1 Eastern, 6 p.m. in London on ABC and the ESPN app. How about what Jawan Howard is doing at Michigan, along with Phil Martelli, former St. Joe's coach, now their associate head coach there. Yeah, and, and Michigan isn't as, as good as they'll be later in the season. They have a 
transfer from Princeton, Jalen Llewellyn, who's actually a great shooter and hasn't shot the ball as well as he's capable of yet. But again, it takes time to get into a new culture and a new program. And then with Kentucky, Oscar Shibwe is a man mountain, gets every rebound in the building. And Jacob Toppin has gotten a lot better coming in uh, from last season. Yeah, I, re I remember listening to an anecdote by John Calipari to tell his uh, Big Blue Nation in Kentucky to hold on everybody. Yeah. As the season <laughs> progresses, you're going to see us jump and continue to rise like uh, Kentucky fans know that they will, especially come SEC play. Yeah, no doubt. And, and obviously having a player of the year candidate like Oscar Shiwe in the middle <laughs> makes that a lot easier. Out of way off that time. Keep in mind, Kern has been on them. Jordan Temple has really dominated that low post so far. Good move inside on the reverse. Jordan stuffs it home for Temple. How about the flip pass by Hasir Miller, though? Gorgeous. So good from the points. Decision making really key for Aaron McKee. Baldwin with a nice up and under. Yeah, you can't just go into statue mode. If you're Nick Jordan on the help, it was a great sidestep by Ace Baldwin. Those two guys got six of VCU 17, pulling in within six. Jordan down low, it's a block call. How about a Sear Miller got himself in trouble underneath the hoop, said whoop, little dish and a jam fest up top, Nick Jordan. And then Ace Baldwin slides by. Smooth. So how does VCU regroup at this stage as we're past the midway point of the first big see Temple dominating down low so far with the Sox? Yeah, sometimes you see teams that are, they haven't found their rhythm offensively, but I actually think VCU hasn't found their defensive rhythm yet. Good point. On, on this possession, they actually got what they wanted. They trapped the pick and roll. They had a dish down to a, to a big guy who had to make a decision. And, and Jaden Nunn thought he had that charge. So he got called for a block. He was just a step slow on that. But I think they need to get some deflections, get some turnovers, and force some bad shots by Temple. I think the officials are conferring here and deciding whether it would go actually against Jordan here and come out for VCU. So a conversation between, that's Mark Schnorr, one of the officials, along with Anthony Jordan. So initially, the call on the floor looked like to be a, a block call. And it's going to go against Jordan. So it's going to be an offensive foul on Temple's Jordan and come out here for VCU. Everybody in the building thought that Jordan would be going to the charity stripe. Not to be. Officials correct it right away. Here's another look note. Yeah, and I think it was a charge. So they got it right yep. eventually. I thought it was a charge initially. He was outside the... Restricted area. None double team quickly. Baldwin taking White yet again. Short that time. Reynolds poked it out. It's going to go off of VCU and back to the outs. Yeah, and I think for Temple, having Jameel Reynolds in there just eat up space in the defensive end makes it so much tougher on VCU. And you saw it right there that Ace Baldwin had to settle for that, that floater from six. When Jameel Reynolds wasn't in the game, he got all the way to the cup. His development has really skyrocketed in Reynolds. That time was Miller who missed. Here's Nunn on a 3v2, coast to coast. Great play by Jaden Nunn. Nobody stopped him. He was waiting. He was waiting. He got all the way on the break. Yeah, and he needed that. No, again, he had a goose egg. He did not score against Vanderbilt. It's a, a player that's averaging nine points per game, but the prior game he had 24 over Kennesaw State. Nunn trying to draw the contact and will. Nunn has been really strong at the outset of this first half for the Temple Apps. Yeah, Jaden Nunn head on a swivel looking for someone to stop him. He says, nobody home lays it in. Dave Leno, Noah Savage back in Philadelphia. He battled a strong start to this game, but here comes Baldwin, three of four, pulling VCU within four. Just want to revisit uh, the play a moment ago on yeah. Jordan. Initially, it was called a block and then changed to a charge, and Mark Schnorr just came over to give us the explanation. Yeah, and it was a, a block due to the restricted area because yeah. it was pointed to, so it wasn't a replay review. It was just three officials coming together. I, I saw it from my angle. Yep. It wasn't in, so it becomes a charge. Yep. That's good officiating. Yep. They got it right again. They can't look at the video monitor until two minutes left 
in the half. So it's going to put Dunn, meanwhile, at the line for Temple. For those that are, are just tuning in, Temple has had the lead from an outset third all-time meeting between these two schools. Temple, of course, a longtime member, a former longtime member of the A-10, winning nine A-10 crowns, of course, now with the American going up against a VCU team. I was supposed to make the tournament, remember, back in 2021. Guys actually got COVID. And they were slated to play Oregon and Indy and actually couldn't play that game. So they last went to the dance in 2019, a first-round loss uh, to UCF, just unfortunate. Yeah, and, uh, you know, obviously this era of college basketball, it, it created so much chaos with the extra years and so many guys and, and a lot of old players around the country who are really good, who are 23 years old. Moving pick there on this VCU team. By the way, a lane violation a moment ago on Reynolds. And, you know, how is how is this VCU culture under Mike Rhodes continued from when he was an assistant and associate from Shaka Smart going from Rice and now uh, getting it done here with VCU, trying to take them to the third NCAA tournament under his watch? Yeah, well, he, he lives by a mantra of coach them hard and, and love them harder. So he's, he's going to give it to you straight. And a, and a big part of their culture is that the gym is always open. Yeah. And guys get in to shoot late, 11 o'clock at night, 12 o'clock at night, and he looks out the window of his office, and he notices who's been living in the gym. Banks off the bench. That was a Noah Savage three <laughs> from your Princeton days, my friend. And it's a two-point game. Yeah, I'll take it, man. Wide open, top of the key. Defensive breakdown by Temple, but VCU's just kind of been hanging around and haven't had a run yet. Yeah, they have made eight of their last nine, started two of ten. Lawal was inside, and VCU started to get it done more efficiently on the offensive side. Right, you see how much attention Ace Baldwin gets. Kick it back to Josh Banks, who Coach Rhodes says a typical VCU guy, paid his dues, said he's so proud of him because he's been putting in the work and finally getting more opportunity this year. Yeah, you're right. He also mentioned that they don't win games at VCU without a player like Banks, who's been in and out of the rotation, especially with Baldwin back in there, but obviously getting some minutes off the bench. And that's key. And you mentioned the depth for both sides right off the bat going to the bench early today. Yeah, and the depth is going to be important for VCU, and open shot making is going to be important because you're able to get open with Ace Baldwin's playmaking. It's just got to be a question of knocking him down. Dunn taking on none will get the friendly roll here in Philly. And that's that old school, it's like a 90s guard with Damian Dunn. He's got great straight line driving, pull-ups, and then at 6'5", he can really post. And he can post you in the mid-post from about 15 feet and get whatever he wants. So you're saying it's reminiscent of Aaron McKee when yeah. he started here at Temple. Eddie Jones, <laughs> 91 to 94, down low. So while taking on Reynolds, going to that left side, better positioning there from Reynolds. Well, it's like the 90s uh, Philly 76ers teams, yeah. right? Good they had point. the big guards. You had Aaron McKee and Eric Snow, and then, you know, Iverson shooting 600 times a game. So it was a good, uh, <laughs> it was a good thing. Here's Banks. One on three was swatted by White. And a foul caught on this end. It's going to be against VCU. And John's pestering battle. I'll tell you, Aaron McKee has set the tone for this program, and it's not just when he has been the head coach now in his fourth year, but also a longtime assistant under Fran Dunphy. Yeah, and obviously a, a Philly legend, right? Everybody remembers watching him both at Temple on the 76ers, and he exudes a ton of toughness that, that his whole program takes on. And that's Mark Bacon, an uh, all-time leading scorer at Temple. Yeah, talking about 90s guards, over 2,600 points. All-time leader in big five points in a season as well. They bring in him and, and Jason Ivey, and the staff has done really well at Temple. You see the re number retired there for making here the rafters at the beautiful Leah Chorus Center. So that's all that knowledge uh, to help uh, carry, like, like you said, the tradition from the John Chaney era of Temple, even going back when the Temple team went to all those fi the two Final Fours under the Chief Harry Litwack. Yeah, and you're, you're a big Philly guy. Yeah. This is, that was your era. The Pepe Sanchez's, oh, the yeah. Elite Eights, of course, uh, never breaking through in that era. But uh, one thing they changed, they don't do the 5 a.m. practices anymore. Now now it's more reasonable under Cheney. Of course, they practice super early. Yeah, we, we lost Coach Cheney back in January of 2021. We, we say hello to the family, and our thoughts continue to be with them. But there's McKee in that last game against 
Indiana 94, and really that has continued, and Fran Dunphy did a reputable job. In fact, that was the last time that Temple got to the NCAA tournament, that 2019 year where they went 23-10, and 13-5 and in the American. That was the last year under Dunphy. The plan was eventually to turn the keys over to that man, Aaron McKee, and they're trying to build for Temple, but it's been tough, right, not just for McKee, but programs across the country because when new coaches were coming in, during the COVID year and coming out of that, that's just so arduous to build a program. Yeah, no doubt. And, and it affected all levels of basketball, and it's going to continue to affect all levels of basketball because when guys get an extra year, now that impacts your incoming recruiting class. So I think for the next five or six years, there's going to be a lot of guys who are under-recruited or playing at a lower level, and maybe some guys who end up at a higher level that, that shouldn't have, quite frankly, but there was just a limited sample size at the high school level. By the way, a one-on-one -on -one situation for both teams with Temple still up by four, breaking this 2-1-2 press, Noah, that we've seen a lot from Rhodes' team. Yeah, they've done a great job. I mean, we haven't seen the on-ball tips. We haven't seen the shooting turnovers, as VCU calls them. Battle to catch and shoot. John Cooch coming in for the first time for the South Sudan. Big bodies you see at 6-10 with that frame. Hicks. Good Great. look for White. Great pass underneath. A little misdirection. No look. White's got six in the game. Temple ahead by six, but as, as Noah's been documented, VCU still hanging in, much stronger. Really from the 10-minute mark in the second half to the latter stages now. Here's Nunn, gets the screen up top from Delos, Ooh. swatted away by Dunn. Battle. Thought about going 1v3 and wisely resets. Dunn looking down low for White. Hicks got Shriver off balance and scores. Zach Hicks. It, it, was, it was such a great jab step to the right that he cleared a ton of space for himself, was able to knock that down. He's, he's a guy who's been on NBA radars because of his size and shooting ability. And that was an NBA shot right there. The jab and go left. And Zach Hicks from right up the road in Camden, New Jersey. No look down low. Jaleel White. And then how about this right here? Look at this jab. Boom. Totally lost Shriver. Set himself up for a wide open shot. And what set that up was he knew where the space was in the defense, so he jabbed right where the help was and went to the open area. Yeah, that was a pretty move. 40% three-point shooter, his first points of this game. You see him averaging almost nine points per game. Banks and Nunn were pressuring there. Let's see the half-court defense for Mike Rhodes' team here. The Temple starting the length of the lead yet again. Down low, John Cooch up top for Dunn for a triple, looking for the fourth Temple three. Not to be. Deloach has the miss for VCU. But that was a great pass by Cor Jung Cooch, who a lot of big guys would have charged right there. But he threw a great skip pass. That's pretty much textbook offense by Temple, other than not knocking down the shot. Deloach likes this matchup, but in and out for him. And see if they can get Brandon Johns into the game. Johns, a grad transfer from Michigan, has been quiet so far. No points, 0 of 1 from the field. He's down low 30 in the black uniform for VCU. Yeah, and he really needs to show up when Jamil Reynolds is not on the court. His size needs to show up. That's going to go out of play. A turnover on Temple up here at home over VCU. It's V Week at ESPN when we partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research. This is game-changing research that helps save lives. You can join the fight against cancer by visiting v.org slash donate. 100% of your donation goes directly to cancer research. No, no, and my father-in-law, Scott, battles leukemia. We had a nice conversation uh, about this last night and went through about a 10-month rigorous treatment regimen, 12 hours a day with chemo treatment. But, but talking to him about battling cancer, it's, it's having the family support around you the right attitude and the support system. He says that you can beat cancer. And Scott, love you. Thanks for watching today. And uh, we're always thinking about everybody out there uh, fighting cancer. And, and hopefully everybody can join the, the V Foundation and the cause uh, to beat it. Yeah, and it's a season of giving. So if you can give, and it, it affects everybody. There's not, not a person out there who hasn't been affected by, by cancer. And 
you know, it's a great thing that the V Foundation does and that ESPN does. Yeah. Big initiative, not just uh, across college basketball, but transcends obviously sports. And we thank everybody for their generosity as you're watching V Week on ESPN. Dave Leno, Noah Savage, our entire crew here in Philadelphia, Temple. Leading by nine, VCU has pulled in a couple minutes ago. It's about a four-point game, but lengthen. White has been strong here for Temple. And speaking of havoc defense in this game, it's a, a VCU team that almost causes about 19 turnovers a game. Yeah, and and the yeah, and the thing is that two minutes ago I was going Temple's doing a great job taking care of the basketball, and then. You wait two minutes, boom, they're right on pace with nine turnovers. And that's what VCU needs to do more of. They want to try to put together a run here. And yeah, just not efficient, though, with those turnovers uh, for VCU on the road. Just five points off of those turnovers. You know, it's a team in VCU that know that they turn the ball over about one-fourth of the possessions. None got it done yet again. Yep, and a little late on the closeout was Damian Dunn. And Nunn playing well. Nunn is nine for this VCU team within six. Battle is open, lost it. That was an errant pass from Dunn, and Baldwin gets fouled by Battle. The 19th foul, one and one situation upcoming here for the Rams. And right here, the trap in the half court. The skip pass is going to be open, but it's got to be on target. And all those little mistakes add up against VCU. And it's almost like you're a boxer. Body blow, body blow, body blow. Eventually, by the end of the uh, the match, you're, you're worn down. And that's what VCU tries to do to you is just relentless pressure and trapping until you make a mistake. Baldwin at the charity stripe. It's the front end of a one and one. It's the 21st annual Women's Jimmy V Classic tomorrow on ESPN2 as number nine Virginia Tech takes on Tennessee at one Eastern. Then at three Eastern on ABC, number seven Notre Dame hosts number three UConn at the Joyce Center to donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Go to v.org slash donate. Of course, uh, Gino Oriema, a Philly guy and former a Temple women's basketball coach Dawn Staley from here as well. Now spearheading South Carolina, who won last year, obviously, over UConn. Yeah, and Dawn Staley, when she started coaching here, was still playing in the WNBA. Great point. And still playing professionally, and she's just done so much for the for the women's game. She's a real inspiration. Miller, a baseline drive. That was strong over Banks. Yeah, and, and on the baseline, he didn't see any of the trap coming from that side. VCU was completely high siding, and he took the baseline and laid it in. That was great recognition by Hasir Miller. 120 to go. VCU within six. None. Double team there. Miller helping out. It's Baldwin over. Dunn got found oh. from three. Counted for ace. And ace Baldwin, who may be an underrated shooter, but he shot 41% from three last year. He had a tiny window and splashed it in, absorbing the contact. He's just hes just so tough. I mean, the, the, the guy is coming off a broken wrist. He begs to get back into the lineup. And according to Coach Mike Rhodes, he is a competitive freak. He's like Kobe-like, if you want to bring up another Philly name where chess, checkers, doesn't matter. But right here, they're maybe take a look and see if it's a three-pointer. He's way behind the line with those patent leather Jordans that's going to be an AM1 four-point opportunity but you know Ace Baldwin he's the type of guy if you're going paintballing you're playing <laughs> chess checkers it doesn't matter you want him on your team he is a competitor and, and doesn't matter what the situation is he he just wants to win and continuing that pedigree of all the great guards to come out of the A-10 that last year sent two NCAA tournament teams to the dance in Richmond of the second round and Davidson as well. VCU was one of four A-10 schools to get to the NIT along with Dayton, St. Bonaventure, and St. Louis. And, you know, uh, talking with Mike Rhodes yesterday, you know, he commented what, what Travis Ford's doing at St. Louis. Like, that's kind of the yeah. barometer right now, would you agree, from the outset of the A-10? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, Dayton has all five starters back. Dayron Holmes is a potential 
NBA guy, a, a big athletic big guy. But then I think point guard-wise, it's Ace Baldwin, it's Yuri Collins. And, and Yuri Collins is a sensational player for St. Louis. And then if you take a look at what Foster Lawyer has been doing for Davidson, 22 a game. He had 38 against Wright State. There, there's so many good guards. And then don't forget about Tyler Burton at Richmond. He's 6'6", athletic, can really shoot it. And then Joshua Doerr is a very talented big guy for George Mason as well. So there's a ton of talent up and down the A-10. Yeah, Dayton bringing back all five starters. And we mentioned from the outset all those coaching changes. And I know you know Matt McKill up a lot at, at Davidson as well, now filling in for his father, Bob. A ton of great years. Chris Caputo, by the way, at a GW from Miami as an assistant. It's a two-point game all of a sudden, Noah, with 1.10 to go. Yeah, VCU stepped up their pressure a little bit. And Caleb Battle's been a little quiet over the last eight minutes. We're going to try to get him involved. Battle's got 12, 4 of 10 from the field. Looking down low for Reynolds. Got over the wall that time, and Johns was late. Yeah, you bring Caleb Battle off the baseline. That removes the help. And then it just becomes an easy feed into Jameel Reynolds. Down low, they're looking for Lawal. Reynolds, all over him, has been huge in the first half defensively for the Owls. Johns looking for his first points, tipped away by Dunn. Yeah, there's nothing there. He just tried to force it in between three defenders. Shot clock is unplugged here for battle, and wisely, Temple's going to reset and get the, the call from Aaron McKee. Yeah, smart. And, and these two guys are still sophomores, and they're playing like upperclassmen, and you saw the great communication. Dunn with Baldwin helping out, gives it up. Miller has to hoist, trying to beat the horn. And Temple will go to the locker room, leading by four. Yeah, and I think they wanted to go towards Caleb Battle. They went on the other side and didn't end up with a great shot. But the Stars have come out today here at Leah Corps Center. They both got 12 points, come back for a whole lot more. Temple ahead of VCU at the half. Start of the second half in Philadelphia. Temple is up by four over VCU, part of the American on ESPN. And welcome back courtside in Philly with former Princeton sharpshooter Noah Savage. I'm Dave Leno. Noah, Temple is led by as many as 11. It's now down to four. VCU hanging in. Yeah, and they're hanging in the way they do it, forcing turnovers. Both teams turning it over too much. Ten turnovers and nine turnovers, respectively, for Temple and VCU. Stop throwing it to the other team, and you might win this basketball game. How about what Baldwin has done between he and Battle? It's been quite the duel between the two. Yeah, I mean, Ace Baldwin been, been pretty much perfect in that first half. Four for five from the field, 12 points, four assists, three steals. So if you're VCU, hold on to that basketball and get it to number one. And Caleb Battle is a star. He has just been spectacular for Temple. Going to try to feed Johns right off the bat. Again, he's been quiet like we stated in half number one, and the foul called right away. And I, I think you could see the, the conservative effort to get the ball into Johns, and I think that's going to be a theme as this second half rolls on because that was missing. Yeah, I mean, he's played a lot of important games in his life at Michigan. He was the number 60 in the ESPN recruiting, recruiting class of 2018, two Sweet 16s in Elite Eight. He's got major experience, and he was super quiet. So how do you get a guy going, dump it right into him coming out of the half and, and see if he can get something going? Yeah, and I think they're going to attack Zach Hicks. That was his third foul. And all that experience that, that Noah just stated, that was key in seeing what Jawan Howard has done with, with Michigan and, and how they're, they're thrashing in the Big Ten along with Purdue, by the way. And, and Matt Painter, I know you and I both have covered Painter, what he's done. Mike Woodson, by the way, a big win in the ACC Big Ten Challenge for Indiana the other night over North Carolina. A packed Assembly Hall. Now it's a two-point game. And VCU has not led. Inside, good interior pass here on the high-low for Reynolds. Skips out here for Baldwin. VCU can tie with the two, go in front with a triple. I think Jamil Reynolds got hit in there, and he, he's... He's treating this game like he's at stations at five-star basketball camp. He's just sitting down on the block. Cherry picking there by Reynolds. Yeah, there it is. But it's it's basically dumping into him and let him go if there's no double team. He's the biggest guy on the court by a mile. And, and it's shown up when he's been on the court. 
Watkins for three. Offensive board yet again by Deloach with a stick back. And that was a big time breakdown by the Temple defense. Jamil Reynolds thought his teammate was going to come back to the basketball, but he left the ball early, and that created that, that wide open shot and putback. Okay, so here again for, for VCU is the 2 1 2 look. How has Temple been breaking that so far? Well, it's the, it's the first passer out of the trap has done a great job to get that hockey assist. So they've gotten into the middle, and then that guy's usually the guy who turns it over, but he's been able to get it to the opposite side of the court. Because a lot of times that guy in the middle is a big who's not that comfortable operating in space. We have the post to Reynolds, gave it off for Miller, the point guard down low. Extra pass battle from Hicks. Long, Johns with the miss. That's great offense, right? You got to trap inside. Deloach for the tie. He's got it for VCU. Knotted up at 39. You can't relax against VCU. They're going to run it right back up your throat. And Ace Baldwin with a great touch pass. This is what VCU does very well here. None breaks out of it. Is it up for Temple for the three? That's good again for Hicks playing with three fouls. And that's what you might give up when you're running and jumping is those pass ahead threes and when they go in it makes it really tough on that defense I'll tell you, he's put two big threes Noah in this game two of three from beyond Johns too many steps it's going to be an offensive foul called against Brandon Johns the grad transfer from Michigan and so Zach kicks on one end bangs a three comes down on the other end great on ball defense on Brandon Johns Jr. That's good minutes, and, and that's who Zach Hicks needs to become even more is a 3 and D guy, and that's how he'll carve out a role for himself at the next level. This is here Miller. Has to be a good game manager, key decisions from Aaron McKee, assistant coach. Chris Clark has done a great job with him. Miller on cue, and he could also add to that with his long-range shooter. Yeah, and he, he's got to knock down that shot because – Damian Dunn and Caleb Battle are going to get so much attention this season that he's going to be the three or the, or the fourth option at times. He could be huge for them just knocking down open threes. Watkins threw it away at that time. Here's Battle 1v3 up and under. So good Great transition, move. right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's so fast, and at 6'5", he's really long as well. And that's, that's the second time we've seen the ball handler not get picked up in the full court and make the right decision to go all the way. Temple's enjoying an 8-0 run. John's extra pass. Down low, nearly too many steps by Watkins. Deloach yet again with a fresh 20 here, but threw it away to battle. And it was great walling up inside by Jamil Reynolds that caused that turnover. Battle splitting two and nine. Watkins was in his way. VCU controls. Here comes Jaden Nunn. Trying to take Dunn with the pull up from 15. And a lot of contact down at the other end. Caleb Battle thought he was going to the free throw line. And that's one thing he can kind of improve on. Damian Dunn is spectacular getting to the free throw line. He's gotten to the free throw line 49 times this year. Caleb Battle only 19 times. And for as good of a shooter as he is, he can pump fake and jump into guys and get calls. Jaden Nunn, by the way, 10 pounds stronger. He has 11. Reynolds draws the contact that time on Deloach. And Caleb, Caleb Battle's done very well in transition from the start of this game. Yeah, Caleb Battle turns on the Jets. Great in tight quarters. Excellent finish for Temple. Now we're jamming here in Philly. Dave Leno, Noah Savage, our entire crew. Temple's up by six. So, so Noah, you had the, the first game that, for Aaron McKee and Temple, the overtime loss to Wagner. What have you thought of this Temple team as they've gone throughout the season trying to get their fifth win to this point? Obviously, the big win over Villanova to Stork Gormick here at home. Yeah, and I think the, the big story is going to be Damian Dunn and Caleb Battle gelling, right? Because remember, last year, Caleb Battle missed every game except for seven games. Damian Dunn was option one, two, and three some games. So now the two of them are still, in my opinion, figuring out how to be great at the same time. And they, they've done it so far, and they've done it a lot quicker then, frankly, I thought they would, but that's going to be the key is their 
continued chemistry. And you can see what they put up per game. And the question for Temple, especially when it comes to the rigors of the American Conference for schools, of course, like Kelvin Sampson, Houston team, Penny Hardaway, Memphis, and others, is who's going to be that third or fourth scorer to support Battle and Dunn? I think Miller's taking a leap. And Reynolds, like we've been stating, is going to be huge against the bigs of the American. Yeah, and Coach McKee told us, in this conference, you need bigs. You need – every team had one or two huge guys. That was missing. They went out. They got Jamil Reynolds. They got Core Jung Cooch, who hasn't seen as many uh, minutes, but he's another big at, at 6'9", who plays a little differently. And, and you're going to need that in the American. And I think that's when, – when people take the snapshot view at Temple, a program that's had so many terrific guards and also low-post players, but – I think that's been the thing that sometimes has missed over the years is having that interior pr presence out of the big and see if they get it this campaign under McKee. None inside would tend to shoot. That was majestic. Yeah, he, he needed to be more aggressive according to his coach, Mike Rhodes, and that's aggressive. Get in the paint, get a piece of it, and then turn and shoot. Excellent execution inside. Yeah, he's... Been very versatile, actually moved to point guard a little bit with Alts, Ace Baldwin. Got two screws in that non-shooting hand and that wrist. Foul called on this end. Back to the move on the other end. Right here, cut off, turns a drive into a post move. Jaden Nunn from Flint, Michigan. Looking like he's bowling a 300 on that move. Good bowler. You're a good bowler, Dave. You know, some may say. I, I don't know these days, but a couple 300s, Noah. I mean, where, where's my look, man? Yeah. We could have bowled last night. I was here. A <laughs> couple lessons, yeah. But, <laughs> but but speaking of none, actually caught up with him uh, before this one. His highest game is a 279. Very arduous to do in bowling an accomplished youth bowler. I think that competitive fire on the lanes, yes, some may think that's comical, but yes, it's competitive in bowling. That translates, obviously, to college basketball. Let's see what he did growing up in Flint, Michigan, on the lanes, travel for bowling and competitions, and obviously killing it here in college basketball. It's a Watkins three, and now it's a two-point game. Jameer Watkins feeling it. Yeah, Jameer Watkins, another Trenton Catholic kid coming back from a major injury as well. He can really shoot it at 6-6 and able to knock down an open three there. First points of the game, by the way. Dunn gave it up there to White, who's back in for Temple. Battle in front of his own bench, a line drive triple. He's just such a great shooter. And what makes him so difficult is that he, he jumps about three feet in the air on that jump shot. And when he came back from injury, he had actually changed the shot a little bit to more of a set shot. And Coach McKee was like, what are you doing? You're a great shooter. Go back to the original shot. And, and you see the product of it right there. Johns trying to answer more arc that time. And counters for VCU back down to two. And both teams just punch, counter punch, hanging around. Got a little bit of a league game feel. But remember, VCU has won games by five points or less. That's a good feat in time to Dunn. Compliments to Jordan. Yeah, and he found him late, which is... He had cut from the left wing. He was already on the right side of the hoop. It was a beautiful pass by Nick Jordan. Ooh. Baldwin inside. It's a block. What was in the restricted area for Temple as Baldwin will go to the line. Back to the Jordan. Find a done. Yeah, Nick, Nick Jordan, another stretch four who can pass it and shoot it. And see how he, he waited till he was always already on the other side of the hoop to get him that basketball. For those that are just tuning in, both teams shooting really prolific here at the second half. Six of nine for both around the 13-minute mark. And exactly what you want to see from both of these schools, known for their high-octane offense. Yeah, and it's a product of the trapping because when you're trapping, you're overloading a side defensively, and their passing, especially skip passing, has led to open shots. It's the 21st annual Women's Jimmy V Classic tomorrow on ESPN2 as number nine Virginia Tech takes on Tennessee at one Eastern, then at three Eastern on ABC. Number seven Notre Dame hosts number three UConn at the Joyce Center to donate to the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Go to v.org slash donate. And we're thinking of everybody fighting out there and trying to battle cancer, need that family support, the right attitude can thank everybody enough for your generosity to the V Foundation. Baldwin with the strip. Again, VCU down by two. They'll look to Watkins. 
Might have walked there. Yeah, it's a good yeah. call. They're all over it. Yeah, because he came to a stop and established his left foot. And then he switched to a right foot pivot. But that's what happens. Jameer Watkins had an open three. And he's a little off the line. He passed it up. And when you when you pass up open shots, you get yourself and your team in trouble. It's a VCU team that really needs to improve their shooting. The looks have been good, according to Mike Rhodes, their head coach, but they're shooting at 30% from three. It's something they desperately missed last year. The them acquiring Shriver, you know, getting that production not just from Baldwin, but none and others really needs to be big moving forward. Jordan to Hicks, a straightaway three, in and out. Big board for Dunn, had White on the weak side and <laughs> lost it. Nunn gets it over to Baldwin for VCU. Yeah, what a steal by Jaden Nunn. He saved the basket because Damian Dunn was open himself too. And Hicks, like a Philadelphia Eagle, Darius Slay to White, oh. and the wall fouled him. A what a take there by White. They're going to look at this to see if it's a flagrant. Now, this is a great, I thought this was a good play. Jaleel White did the right thing to attack the hoop, and I thought it was a good contest. Right here up high. I mean, he's vertical, right? I thought it was a good play on the ball. Yeah. Uh, Toby Lawal, but the, the, the rule is not about intentionality anymore. It's about uh, excessive contact. So it, it actually wouldn't surprise me if it was a flagrant, even though it's a good play, because that's the way we've gone. Dave, yeah, it's a great right there, our crew. I, you know, he almost he almost got as a clean block. There's almost a clean block. Love the take, though, from Jaleel White. Well, it's been topsy-turvy for him. And, and I'm not talking about his play, but because he's battled that knee injury, lands yeah. awkwardly there. So Mark Schnur, Chuck Jones, Anthony Jordan, our referees will take a look at this. Uh, I think you and I are in agreement. Lawal looked like he had some positioning there. Didn't get there late. I thought it was a good, listen, Aaron McKee's era, in my era, it's a, it's a good attempt at a dunk, and it's a good play, and it's a foul, and you move on but this might be a flagrant one. A big call too, and I know it's only 12-17 here in the second half, but you're seeing slowly the momentum shifting to VCU that they're calling and trying to trying to tie this one from, from the jump of this game. They've been very close again. Those just tuning in, Temple was leading by as many as 11, and VCU has is, is hung in here thanks to the play in large part to Baldwin and Nunn, but Watkins and Johns are starting to feel it, but Deloach as well has nine in the game. And they've looked for him down low for VCU. Right, so excessive and unnecessary or not a legitimate play on the ball. So it's a play on the ball. Well, let's see if they thought it was excessive and we're getting some clarification here. Yep. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Mark Schnoor, for, for coming to the table. Yeah, and we, we got a great explanation, and it was a play on the ball. The momentum of his body carried him, and he, he landed ugly and awkwardly, but it was a common foul, and I think it's a great piece of officiating. Yep. So we'll send White at the line for two. Seven points total in the first six games, six so far. Last look here. Right there. I mean, it was it was almost a clean block, actually, and then he got a ton of arm on the way down. But you got to credit Jaleel White. We're going in there without fear. That's how you got to go in. How about the performance by White in this game already with eight? Seven total entering this one. Baldwin. No look pass for Watkins. Looking for a second. He's got it for VCU. And how about the no-look feed by Ace Baldwin? He's like a quarterback in the pocket. You, you check down, you draw on the safety, zip it to the corner. Wide open three. 204 from three. I can call on this end with Hicks going down. We'll take a timeout here. What a game between Temple and VCU. Temple up by one here in Philly. 
Ace Baldwin's team is just down by one. He's been huge, not just in the half-court sets, but also in transition. Not just a scorer, but also is an assist man, too. Yeah, he, he takes the baseline, and right there he froze the help on the opposite side and got the ball to Jameer Watkins with a no-look dish. 14 points, 8 assists, and 4 steals for VCU. He's such a special player, and, you know, so much of it is mental. Not only his competitive nature, but vision, seeing the court, and then using some trickery to trick the defense. I think it's a great point because you see how Baldwin impacts the game. It's not just the 14 points. You see the adept shooting in this game, a la battle, but it's his ability to be unselfish. And I know that stems from all his play in the Baltimore area at St. Francis Academy, how he starred there, and how that's transcending also to Richmond, Virginia, and VCU. I mean, eight assists, only one turnover. And that's been what's kind of holding VCU back from breaking away here. 14 turnovers in the game. So Hicks is at the line. Again, he'll have one more as we uh, went to timeout. Just one for two. Temple holds a two-point edge. Ball out there with none up top. They also have Lawal in the game and Watkins and Shriver. Look at him on the high ball screen here, Noah. Yeah, they tried to ghost it, so he didn't even set the screen to try to get an open three. But I'd like to see him set that thing, create some contact, and then pop. There's Lawal. The rotational players to Shriver driving in with the left hand, looking for the tie. Oh. Lawal missed the dunk. Man, it doesn't get any easier than that putback dunk. White again on Lawal, just like the last play that wasn't a flagrant, and going back here to Watkins. Yeah, both teams doing a good job to contest vertically inside. None wants it with the spin move, and I think that's going to be a travel call. They're right over that. Chuck Jones is on it. Right here, good drive inside by David Shriver. Backside, I mean, that's about as easy as a putback as you can get from Toby Lawal. Now, I say that over here, who I can't probably touch the rim anymore, but it, it's, it's easy if you can, uh, you know, if you have a 44-inch vertical and you're wide open. So you're sending you to get the ladder out after this one for you? Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. Can we lower the rim? Yeah. Then I could do it. That's the sharpshooter Noah Savage who started at Princeton. And still dunked the basketball, I might add. Well, I'm, I'm coming off uh, Achilles, but <laughs> previous I could. You know, he's stolen away by none. There's Dunn for Temple, seven to shoot. He has to hoist it up. And it will go back to VCU. Yeah, and you're seeing the kind of the building blocks that make up VCU's defense. Jalen Deloach was one-on-one -on -one with Damian Dunn, and he did such a great job to not foul in that situation and to wall up and make what, what could have been a layup into a really tough floater. Right, let's see, Noah, if VCU could take better care of the basketball. 15 turnovers on Mike Rhodes' team. Again, it's a team that forces nearly 19 per game, one-fourth of a opponent's possessions, one of the best in a adjusted efficiency. Really, three of the last four years have been in the top 15 in the country. Yeah, as, but as Deloach is down, right? Yeah, Deloach might be shaken up, but just to get back to your point, they do have 15 turnovers, but Ace Baldwin only has one. Yeah. So he's your point guard. Let him play make. But let's let's see what uh, what's going on here with Jalen Deloach. From Savannah, Georgia, sophomore had a, a post-grad year at the Skills Academy as well. Has been key for Coach Rhodes' team. Plays like a point forward, the energy guy, very versatile. Versatile his role, according to Rhodes, changed from last year going into this campaign. Plays with really a high motor, and I thought he made quite an impact about the midway point of this game. Let's have another look at it now. Yeah, and right there, walling up. And a little, yeah, incidental contact at the end of the play, but comes from an incredibly athletic family. His sister Taylor ran track at Ohio State. Brother Kalen played football at Florida State. So, you know, those, those backyard games <laughs> make it tough with your siblings, and looks like he's still in a lot of pain. They really stepped in due to the departure of Hassan Ward, who went to Iowa State, and Levi Stockard, who graduated. Take a look at another look by our great crew. Watch on the left side of your screen here. You have that initial contact on Damian Dunn. 
And the officials did take a look at this and they can by rule. Nothing, according to Mark Schnur, referee, thank him for that communication. Just making, just making sure. But before he got whacked in the face, great on ball defense. Yes. I mean, really great. Chested up, his arms went vertical. It's so tempting late on a, when you're guarding a driver to reach in and foul, and he didn't do that. That's, that's great individual defense. Okay, here we go, Noah. A little more than 10 minutes left in regulation, a two point game. Watkins trying to take Don. A great shot selection there for VCU in the half court. Yeah, well, it's, it's actually the same shot that Jaden Nunn made on the other side. So when you airball, it looks really bad, but uh, I think a makeable shot. Dunn double team quickly on the switch. John's on him. Dunn has a seat with the right hand. Count it and a foul for the Owls. Yeah, and the thing about Damian Dunn is that you can't speed him up. He got a mismatch that he liked with Brandon Johns Jr. He saw the entire right side open, and that's where he went, away from all the help. Great one-on-one -on -one move and even better finish. A little like Marty Collins. Yeah, great point. Played slow, slower, and slowest. He had three gears, and he averaged about 22 a game and, and killed everybody he played against, but he didn't play fast. Mm -hmm. And that's similar to Damian Dunn, who, who just plays under control. A little like Paul Pierce type game. I think we'll need that moving forward. Remember, he started his career, no at Tulsa in 19 and 20. He's been at Temple since the COVID year and actually led the team in scoring last year. Remember, Battle dealt with injury. Here's Baldwin, VCU down by four, trying to take Battle in our star watch. Had to give it out here for Johns for three at a good angle. Fault salt short the whole way. Yeah, good D inside by Caleb Battle on the ball. And an, another great pass by Ace Baldwin to get an open three. Battles open against Baldwin. Right over Ace that time, in and out. White tried to get the miss. Jordan has it over to Battle inside. Schreiber couldn't get it. How about Battle 1v3? Back to Johns. Here comes VCU. Just fun physical basketball inside. Five guys going after it. Watkins looking for his third. But you're seeing the attention that, that VCU has on the defensive end. Battle open for three from the corner. Just as I say it, they break down. The last time down, they were all over Caleb Battle in the corner. This time they leave him wide open. You cannot leave that Welcome guy to open. Diane Richardson, formerly of Towson, now spearheading the Temple Owls women's basketball program. Called a slew of Temple women's basketball in the past. Uh, Leah Butts, Fionda Fitzgerald. A lot of key players that have come from the Temple women's side play next door actually at, at famed arena, McGonagall Hall, where, where Aaron McKee and Mark Macon, Jason Ivey, others have starred and going to play today at the beautiful Leah Corps Center. Gave Leno Noah Savage, our entire crew in Philadelphia. What a game it's been between Temple and VCU. It's been seesawing back and forth. Temple up by seven. This is what VCU needs more of. Second turnover of the game. Right on, I'm like announcer Jinx one-on-one -on -one here, but Ace Baldwin is is where VCU needs to put the basketball the rest of this game. That's their 16th turnover, but it's only his second. And, and given how he's, other than that pass, he's protected the basketball. That's where VCU needs to go for their offense. They're not getting punished too much. 11 points off of those 16 turnovers for the Owls offensively. Here's Dunn for that pick and pop there. Didn't come to fruition for Jordane. Hicks with the pull-up. Yes, got it that time over Johns. He, he's a great shooter, and he relies a ton on the three, but that's the, the next step for his game, getting open spaces and hitting pull-ups. It's in nearly four minutes that VCU has gone scoreless. Very uh, epitomizing this game that it's been close and then lengthened by Temple. Here's Banks coming off the bench, hit by Battle, got away from Baldwin. Battle. To the races, got fouled that time by Kern. Hopefully, Caleb battles all right. 
Just watch right here. Caleb Battle got in the passing lane, and Ace Baldwin had him kind of screened off and then didn't know where the ball was. And good attack by Battle, who got hit in the head. So they're going to call both teams to the benches again and have another look at it. So they'll take a look at this battle. Seems to be all right. Temple leading. Irish, 7.33 here ago in Philly. Temple is up by nine. The foul, by the way, was on Kern. They did take a look, but the story in this game has been battle what he's done today. Four consecutive 20-point games. He's been so great, and it all comes from his outside shooting. There's been times in the game where he's gotten some open ones, but even when he's not open, he just jumps over his defender, is able to knock it in. He's dynamic in, in the open court, physical, getting to the line. He just played a great game for Temple. He's been the difference so far this afternoon. And Chuck Jones did come over to our broadcast position. It was just a common foul on Kern, his second. Temple's on a 9-0 spurt. Remember, VCU closed within one at 55-54. VCU tied the game at 39, but then Temple went on an 8-0 run. So that's really been the epitome of this game. VCU has gotten very close, haven't been able to break the seal, Noah, and that continues with Temple lengthening their lead. Yeah, I mean, Temple's D has been long, aggressive, making passing angles very hard, tip balls. Yeah, great, great observation. Right and, on and, and, and that's how you have to play. It's one thing to have big guards, right? 6'5", six, 6'5", five, six, five in the backcourt. Kassir Miller, not as big, but, but those two guys are. Now, how do you have it show up? you got to tip balls, you got to get steals, and you got to play big if you're going to be a big guard at 6'5". Watkins is going to come back in. It's a VCU team right now spending five minutes where they haven't scored, have stayed at 54. And that's a credit to Temple, which you know, we commented. Offensively, they've been great. Defensively, they want to see that improve moving forward, trying to get their fifth win. Johns trying to take White inside with the left hand. He'll get the call. Might have been a little late, but he'll get it nonetheless from Anthony Jordan and go to the charity strike. Yeah, and right there, the, these officials have done a great job. They've had a great day. That was not a foul. And my, my litmus test is if you called it down to the park, would everybody on the court kind of look at you sideways? And if you're playing pickup and you call that one, even the guys on your team are going to go, come on, man, don't call these, these little nickel dimers. All right, so we have for the game. I'll, I'll bring you to Capitola Park, and we'll, we'll play in South Philly, then go for a cheesesteak at Gino's and Pat's like you referenced Let, Let's on. do it. There your you dad still plays. Yeah. How about that? We're talking before the game. Still balls uh, every Thursday night. Sometimes I get in there, too. <laughs> Not like this level, but those guys are pretty good for their age. So here's Johns. See what he's brought in six. Strong there. All right, so let's see how uh, VCU can buckle down here, Noah. Down by 10, about seven minutes to go in regulation. And you got to play all 40 when you play VCU. They're still going to be running, jumping, getting you to play scramble basketball. Done with the left hand. That was strong for the Temple guard. Yeah, but now he fell down. You got an advantage for VCU. Largest lead for Temple here at 12. Good move inside. Unselfish to Deloach, who was hurt a couple minutes ago, and finishes. And I love that if you're VCU, Damian Dunn with a great move, but he falls down. You got to know you have five on four. And now they force a timeout by Temple. White was a little bit of trouble there. It's the timeout from McKee. Deloach with a career high 11. But let's go back to the play of Damian Dunn for the X. Right here, Damian Dunn so strong. Gets to that left hand. Great finish for Temple. I mean, he's a star in his own right. And Caleb Battle is back. He's a great player. But Damian Dunn is a great player in his own right as well. So there's going to be games where Damian Dunn has 30 where Caleb Battle maybe only has 15-16, but those two are going to be a really tough guard matchup in this league. And yeah, in recent years, they had Chiz Austin and also Nate Pierre-Louis. You know, you go back to the play of Josh Brown, who handled the point. A lot of big guards. Lynn Greer, if you go all the way back. Pepe Sanchez. Some of the others we were referencing here. Deontay it's Christmas. A, yeah, it's a, it's a Temple program that that's been through and through. That, that stems not just from... The key from to Dunphy and, and John Chaney, but to the Chief Harry Litwack. And the fifth winningest program, which I think is lost in the grand sphere of college basketball because of those glory years for Temple in the past. Yeah, and no doubt. I mean, it's a great program. It's a institution. Of course, you come here, you get to play in the Big Five, which is a, a Philly tradition, very special. They got still some games left on that schedule. But 
Here, here's the combination, right? Battle and done with 33 of their 77. Yeah, it's 50 percent of the team and that's what's going to be key for teams like VCU the rest of the way and others Noah are the, are the scouts on those two if one of those guys falters in a game who is going to step up for Temple I think that's the question that the that Aaron McKee his staff and fans around Temple are going to be focused on moving forward yeah without a doubt and, and keep in mind they still have a lot more basketball oh, if they end up staying their entire tenure here at, at Temple one on one situation here for battle. Twenty two so far in this game for Aaron McKee's team. Like he started here from ninety one to ninety four. Number six man of the year for the Philadelphia 76ers. A draft pick to Portland before he went to Philly and starred with Iverson and Snow and the others he referenced early on. Right, played it, played in the finals against the Lakers. Yep. Kobe, Shaq. It's a low. She's been good. Ten point game yet again for VCU. He's got a great motor, and good things are happening for VCU when they're dumping it down to the block. So they may keep going back to this that down low approach for the last 5:45 here. Jordan, a little bit of trouble, gives way to White. The right hand, he'll get the contact on Deloach. That's his fourth. I just love the way Jaleel White has been attacking the basket. He really is throwing caution to the wind, throwing his body all over the place, and he, he barely had an angle there, but watch when he goes into the lane here. He seeks out the contact and gets two opportunities at the line. Remember, he started Wildwood Catholic. Last year was a Big Five Rookie of the Year. By the way, Temple 2-0. Big Five play with wins over Villanova in last game. LaSalle at the Palestra, where they had a doubleheader. It's also an all-rookie team in the American. And then starting out the season, battle wasn't. Got hurt a little bit. You see the, the wrapping on White at the now on the left side of your screen, number two in the cherry. Here's Baldwin, the quiet as of late. Deloach oh. has been really strong in this game. He's got 15. But that was great. <laughs> great pick and roll action by East Baldwin. Snaked the screen. He drew the defender. He knew exactly where his teammate was. That was his eighth dime, Noah. Still down to 10. A little over five minutes to go in regulation in Philadelphia. Dunn taking on two. Whoa. Spinning around was Baldwin yet again down low. Watch this right here. He snakes the screen, so he goes back the direction he came, draws in Nick Jordan, and dumps it down low to Jalen Deloach. Gorgeous scoop pass underneath. Look at that. That is, that is special because he knew exactly where he was going when he drew in Nick Jordan. He, he sees the floor a step ahead of everybody else and shows you why he is one of the best players in the Atlantic 10. Perfect shot there with Baldwin and Dunn, 1v1. Baldwin, by the way, picked up the foul. Unfortunately for VCU, that's his fourth. With 14 points in the game, 4 of 5 shooting for Ace Baldwin. And for those that follow VCU and and the program, of, of course, going through the rigors of the A-10. Uh, Baldwin's going to be a key piece. You're going to be hearing his name not just in A-10 play, but also around the top guards in college basketball. Yeah, without a doubt. And they, they've added two seconds to the clock here. But you're going to hear his name. You're going to hear Yuri Collins for St. Louis, who's always among the leaders in the country in assists. Gibson Jimerson for them got so much better. Uh, but certainly, Ace Baldwin is going to be one of the top players in that league, along with Foster Lawyer, Tyler Burton. It's a, it's a deep league, and, and there's been some surprises already. Remember, Loyola Chicago is the 15th member in the A-10 now. We know what they've done when it comes to the tournament. It's Baldwin. Don't call Jamie Nunn's name too much in the second half, Noah. It's Johns in front of his own bench. Needed that. White skies up for the miss over Deloach. I think they're going to reset the shot clock here. It didn't move. 
Yeah, you're seeing kind of what what happened to VCU in the second half, which is they made the right play. They got an open shot to Brandon Johns Jr., but he just didn't knock it down. And so they're gonna reset the shot clock here. Here's another look. Yeah, right there. This never started. Possession changes, and they didn't reset the shot clock, so they no, push the up. button. Push the button here, courtside. What's yeah. that? Oh, do I have that power? <laughs> no, we don't. We don't. <laughs> we'll just play running, running time. That makes it easy, right? Offensive efficiency for VCU. You know, scoring has been what Coach Rhodes said has been up and down this year. So far in this game, what what have you made from from VCU today? It's going to come down if they knock knock down open shots because. With Ace Baldwin running things, they're getting open looks, but they've just had stretches where they've struggled from the three-point line. Yeah, 12th in, in scoring offense out of all the, the A-10 schools where VCU's at right now. There's Don number 10 to shoot. Hicks taking on Johns off balance, but got the contact. That's a tough one for VCU. That was solid defense in the half court there, but Johns gets called for the foul. Yeah, and that's what Coach McKee said. He wants to see a lot more out of Zach Hicks putting it on the ground at 6'7". He's got that ability. And I think Brandon Johns did come down on that arm. So that's one where you play good defense at the initiation of the possession, but then you foul in the last second. No need for it. And for Hicks, a guy that, that is shooting hasn't looked great for McKee. Remember, coming in, shooting less than 30% from the floor. I think what I've admired... And I know you're right with this, is the assertiveness of guys like Hicks and Reynolds at the start of the game, Miller, their point guard. Hicks, despite some of the shooting numbers that have waned, has been very confident. Yeah, without a doubt, and, and he should be. He's, he's a great shooter, so you're going to go through some stretches where you don't knock down shots, but the aggressiveness needs to be there, and I think Jamil Reynolds, who we just showed there, has, has had some excellent minutes as well for Temple. Temple up by 13. Ooh. Battle got called for a foul. He doesn't like it. Chuck Jones had it for the weak side. Yeah, That's Jalen. Second. Jalen Deloach was trying to post up Caleb Battle down low. And I don't know. I thought it was a clean. I thought it was a clean steal. But let's take a look. Caleb Battle battling in the post looked like a pretty clean steal to me. They could be. This is a great time of year, though. You get the college football, you got college basketball heating up, NFL. That was put in by Watkins, by the way, out of the timeout. It was Deloach inside. Baldwin hasn't scored since the 13-minute mark for VCU. It's an 11-point game here in Philadelphia. So Temple can afford to use clock the rest of the way. The clock is their friend. They also have the whistle on their side and the bonus. Deloach looked good there, Noah, now low. There's none. Now with 13.6 of eight from the field. Baldwin playing with four fouls. Has to be careful, should get a block here. And he will, the blocking call against Battle. That's his third. Battle's so aggressive on the defensive end that sometimes he gets himself out of position. He's got four steals. He could have had a fifth steal if they didn't call that foul on him. But sometimes in a play like that, you got the lead, and you're going for a steal against Ace Baldwin. Instead of just play position D, stay in front of him. you got about five inches on him. But just knowing situation right there. I know you saw a lot of VCU last year with Baldwin. You think the, the chemistry the strongest with none. I, I, I feel like none's been a little bit quiet the last five to eight minutes. Watkins had a good surge finding Johns more. But who do you think is going to be that key piece for Baldwin moving forward? I, you know, honestly, it, it should be Johns. Like, Brandon Johns is very talented. He's very versatile at 6'8", can really shoot it. And a stretch four and a good point guard are a great combination because you can pick and roll and pick and pop, but he's been pretty quiet today. And there's that pressure for VCU. Mike Rhodes doesn't like the call, but it's against Johns yet again, who can't believe it, and he's out. That's his fifth. So we saw Caleb battle with, I thought, a, a bad foul the last time, and then Brandon Johns Jr., you've got the trap. You're in the coffin corner there. You've got baseline and sideline. You don't need to reach. Just be big, have the trap, and the steal comes off of the next pass. So right there, he reaches in, no need for that reach. You've got him trapped. You did your job. Six points, one of five for Johns with Mike Rhodes leading the way for VCU. Mahanoy 
area high school player himself. Actually started in Lebanon Valley as well, D3 in Pennsylvania. If John's out, but I agree, Noah, he's going to be key for Coach Rhodes' team down the latter stretch of non-conference play and then transitioning into the A-10. And it could be, you know, Jameer Watkins, Jaden Nunn, Jalen Deloach. They're, that's kind of been a trademark of VCU is their balance. So it could be different guys every night. Watkins, three minutes ago to Deloach. Dunn was late getting over. Trying to help out Hicks, called for the foul. Yeah, they've been really trying to fire it in to Jalen Deloach. He's done a good job establishing deep post position. Right here, look how deep he is. Great overhead pass, and then Damian Dunn got him on the arm. Yeah, career high 15 for Deloach in this game. He's one of the the big shot blockers as well when it comes to A-10 numbers and also in rebounding has stepped up when guys have either transferred or graduated from the program. Obviously just a sophomore for VCU, but they'll count on him to make plays at the rim, but he's versatile where he can step away as well for the Rams. Down by 10 under three minutes to go in regulation. VCU needs, needs to force a couple turnovers to get some, some life back in there system here with under three left to go and again temple handling that pressure well and they broke out of that 2-1-2 two, two full court trap nicely in this game credit to mckee and the staff on the scout hicks for three short the whole way kern has the miss baldwin with his left gave it up for deloge offensive foul he's done that's his fifth that's unfortunate for the rams now let's see where Zach Kicks was taking that charge. Again, I thought Ace Baldwin, he read the help well. He knew where the ball needed to go, but right there, Hicks's heel is hovering over the line, but I don't know if it's touching. Look at his left heel. He actually got it outside. And man, that's tough to see. And that's, that's devastating for VCU and huge for Temple, but that's about as close as it gets to being on the line. Yeah, well, welcome back to Ace Baldwin. Obviously played in the Vanderbilt game on a Wednesday, getting the two screws in his non-shooting hand. There's another look at it. Looked like he was outside the restricted area. I agree with you, it was close. Outside, but also, was he there in time? And they're going to review this to see if this is going to be a blocker charge. Huge call. It's a big one. You need a guy like uh, Baldwin back who hasn't scored as of late. But in this game, it's been pretty solid on both ends of the floor for VCU to his pedigree. Hey, he's been great coming off pick and rolls, finding tight space, being able to get open in those little four-foot boxes. And then the end one three was spectacular play. And Caleb Battle, oh, man, is he dynamic. Shoots his super high jump shot, able to get it off over any kind of defender. So they're not going to take a look because well, it needs to be under two yeah. by rule to look at the replay. You're right on. Yep. They can't look, so he's done, for those that were just wondering uh, why there was a little bit of a hiatus. There's the difference in both halves for these guys. You know, battle has been very consistent. Baldwin, you know, the Temple made the adjustments from half one to half number two. He is out. Temple with zero turnovers. In the last 10 minutes, Hicks breaking three past the loads. Compliments of battle. When you press, you're going to give something up, and Temple's done a great job all day long locating where that weakness is. Great pass ahead. Much needed buckets here with two minutes to go in regulation. None right hand will stay on this head. They broke the pressure really well throughout this afternoon. But how do you beat a press with long passes? Great pass ahead by Damian Dunn, and then Caleb Battle inside to Zach Hicks, who threw it down. Zach Hicks has been really good all afternoon for Temple. Right there, he, he made other parts of his game besides three-point shooting show up, 6-7, be a big target, and then throw it down. By the way, the fourth foul on Damian Dunn with none at the line from Flint, Michigan. 
Uh, they've asked him to be more aggressive. We've, we've commented on that assertiveness in this game after not scoring in 23 minutes against Vandy. That was a wild game, right? Jerry Stackhouse got thrown out. The game oh, was yeah. close at that point, right? Wild. A wild ejection from Jerry Stackhouse. Had to be restrained a number of times and kind of didn't mince words about the, the officiating after the game either. But we can handle the fine. He's yeah. got a good yeah. – <laughs> he said just uh, send me the invoice. In the 18 turnovers on VCU hasn't helped Coach Rose's team where that pressing stems from his uncle in Mickey Holland at Monahoy Area High School. They pressed for like 32 minutes a game in high school. Tampa going to take its time and uh, try to get to 5-4 and four on the young campaign. Done with the right hand. Swatted away by Deloach. It's been the bright spot along with Baldwin today. And this is going to be good muscle memory, game memory, whatever it is for Temple. How to close it out at home against a good team. I mean, VCU is, is really good. And I've been really impressed with how Temple has handled playing with the lead. Uh, tips in once again for the Owls. Dunn is strong down low. And it's an 80 spot for Temple. Trying to win their third straight. Good drive by Kern. Gets his own miss. Hicks grabs it along with White. I think mean, White has been really strong rebounding today. Yeah, I think Temple's done a good job rebounding as a team. They've been you know, five guys going in there with two hands and, and able to control the glass. And plus two in the rebounding disparity, in case you were wondering. Wind the shot clock down here, Noah, with Battle. Battle from deep. He was fouled by Zeb Jackson, who hasn't played much. It will be shooting three. Back to the done play. Right there. Great play. We just kind of sneak in front of the rim. You throw it over the top. And a little magic underneath, flipping it up and in. <laughs> Almost from his backside. What a finish. You know, we see it at shoot-around practices. They, you know, they work on those inbounds plays so much. Worked out to fruition there for, for Dunn. And, and also, so stealthy down low are these Temple guards, not afraid to go into the low post. Yeah, another thing you could do in that situation is you kind of fake tie your shoe yeah. and you walk right in front of the hoop, and then if you have an inch on the guy, they throw it right behind his head. It, it was, it's a beautiful play. You think there's one or two in the repertoire for, for you each could team, do it, right? You could do it once a half. <laughs> Well, if you trick the guy more than that, there's a problem. Kind of thinking of the, the major league analogy, right? The college basketball yeah, yeah. <laughs> some of those plays. But I, but I like it there from Dunn. They can't wait to follow him come you know, American Conference action with he in battle. But on the, on the last play, you saw Caleb Battle had the ball. Zeb Jackson knew he was just going to elevate, and he still couldn't get to him without fouling. And that just shows you what a great one-on-one -on -one player that he is. And remember, VCU cut the deficit to one with 12 minutes left. And then Temple since went on a 28-13 spurt. VCU has been close, but couldn't get it back to a stalemate since the teams were knotted up at 39 apiece. And Temple's going to improve to 5-4. VCU will fall to 5-3 and three as it's stalled away by Watkins. Watkins with the right and one. Now on White. VCU is playing it out to the buzzer here. Good drive and one. Again, both these teams have played in so many close games. I'll be this one getting away a little bit from, from a VCU team with a net ranking in. It's around 57 right now. Very important with that schedule. And there you see the Temple women coming up on ESPN Plus, taking on UMBC for Diana Richardson's team. These few schedules tough. You know, more wins are going to come here for this Rams program. But it's all Temple today. Yeah. Three consecutive wins for Temple, all by double digits, and take it by 10 over VCU. Yeah, just a mature team victory. Great home performance by Temple and a great win here against a good VCU program.